Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the SMOOTH final event. My name is Eva Merloni. I'm the project manager for ESBA, the European Small Businesses Alliance, that is one of the partners of the SMOOTH project. Uh, we have a great program for you today, ladies and gentlemen, but first of all, let me just give you some information. Uh, I'd like to remind you that uh, this conference will be recorded and uploaded on the YouTube channel of the project after the event. And if you have any comments or questions, please use the chat of the uh, GoToWebinar and we will try to respond in real time. Uh, however, if you don't receive any immediate reply, don't worry, we are going to collect all the questions and then to upload a document with all the replies on our website. Uh, I think it's time to start and now I would like to welcome the panelists of the opening session of this conference that will give us an introduction to the project and on the importance of GDPR for small and micro enterprises. Uh, first of all, I'm glad to introduce to you Rosa Maria Araujo Rivero, the project coordinator of SMOOTH. Uh, Rosa is a senior project expert on European co-funded project of EUREKAT, the Technology Center of Catalonia that brings together public research body, university and companies. She has dealt with the many projects related to a wide range of technological domains, such as energy and resources, EF, new material and processes, and digital technology. And she is currently the project coordinator of SMOOTH, funded by EU program Horizon 2020. And right after Rosa, we will leave the floor to David Caro, which is the president of the European Small Businesses Alliance a non-party political European group representing small businesses and self-employed with a strong network of connection within European institutions and small micro-enterprises. Uh, as well as working uh, smooth as responsible for communication and dissemination actions, so to guarantee that the smooth activities reach micro-enterprises at European level. So, uh, floor, the floor is yours, Rosa, we can start. Thank you, Eva. Good morning, everyone, and thank you very much for your interest in the project. My name is Rosa Araujo, and I'm the coordinator of the SMOOTH project. I have a degree in business administration, and I'm working in Euricat, the technological center in Catalonia, Spain, as project manager. Um, I've been involved in European projects for more than 10 years. In the event today, I will be presenting what SMOOTH is about, the long journey we've made to get here, our results, and I will give you later a live demonstration of the platform. The project was originally planned to last 30 months, but when we designed it, we didn't know that in the middle of the implementation, there would be a worldwide pandemic. So we had to extend it by three months to achieve our objectives. And now I give the floor to David Caro to introduce himself. David? David you have to unmute yourself. You're mute. Thank you. My apologies for that. Uh, according to the last official available 2015 data, Almost 93% of all enterprises in Europe in the non-financial business sector have less than 10 employees. These micro-enterprises are responsible for 30% and 21% of the overall employment and value added in the EU respectively. However, when we refer to the data, general data protection regulation requirements, micro-enterprises are the most vulnerable due to their lack of expertise and resources to invest in its adoption. We at ESBA, the European Small Business Alliance, are a non-party political group who care for small business entrepreneurs and self-employed and represent them through targeted EU advocacy and profiling activities. Representing almost 1 million small businesses and all around Europe, our mission is to listen to their needs and to provide them with new and innovative tools for their daily business activities. That's why we decided to take part in the SMOOTH project. Smooth has developed solutions 
that assist our micro enterprises in smoothly adopting GDPR, safeguarding the interests of EU citizens on data privacy and security, and avoiding the negative socioeconomic consequences that result from breaches uh, of the data regulations. The entry into force of GDPR has transformed the interactions between users and the websites they browse. Companies need to incorporate new regulations, professionals and specific tools into their existing governance and business plans. Future years will probably observe the surge of more innovative businesses committed to creating trusted, profitable, data-driven systems with clear benefits in transparency. But for the time being, small businesses need to start this process with proper tools. Being GDPR compliant is necessary for any companies that are dealing with personal data, be it from customers, employees and suppliers. Therefore, its benefits are clear cut in terms of being law abiding. Along with that, there is also some benefits that might be very valuable for our small businesses. For instance, the chance to cut costs of storing data, legacy applications and inventory software. The release from data maintenance expenses, whose funding can be redirected to, for example, innovation resources and infrastructure management. Reinforcing a business's reputation by showing to customers a reliable data governance system. I'm quite sure that all the instruments that Smooth Project has developed, such as the Smooth Handbook and the Smooth Platform, will help all European micro enterprises, ESPA members or not, in reaching all these benefits. I will leave the explanations of details to the following speakers, who I'm sure will help you understand better what Smooth has to offer. But I will take advantage of this opportunity to highlight one of the last activities of the Smooth project. It is the market pilot, which is open to all micro enterprises at European level, and to which I strongly urge you to take the chance to participate. With just a few clicks, you can be there. The Market Pilot will give you tailored support for your man data management. It's a valuable and free of charge chance for small businesses across Europe to quickly test if their data storage and management is GDPR compliant. You can find the Market Pilot on the Smooth website. Keep in mind that it will end on the 29th of January. We are all here attending the final conference of Smooth. All project activities have been finalized but all the tools that have been developed remain accessible on the Smooth website. From our side, ESBA will continue in pushing these instruments along among our members because we strongly believe in the benefits to be gained from their use. I would like to express my thanks for this opportunity. It has been a pleasure for myself and ESBA to be part of this project and I now leave the floor to all other speakers. Thank you for joining us today and I now hand back to Ava. Thank you very much, David and uh, Rosa, for this uh, introductory speech that gave us a first uh, overview about the topic of the project, that is GDPR. Uh, but now let me share with you some fields produced by the Smooth project, uh, starting with an introductory video um, to, um, that explained the GDPR regulation in a nutshell, answering the question that everybody asks, uh, what is personal data? So let's See the video.
Okay, here we are. I hope you enjoyed the video. And now it's my honor and pleasure to introduce to you our external expert, Mr. Stefan Moritz, the Managing Director of European Entrepreneurs at Me, um, a, bus, a Brussels based business federation which represents the interests of micro, small, and medium enterprises toward the European Union institution. He has a long year's experience in European-funded economic project develop, development project with international partner networks all around the continent. He is an, ex, an experienced project manager for regional economic development, European network manager, workshop facilitator and strategic advisor. And today he is going to share with us the challenges for small and micro enterprises with digital transformation, talking about uh, business models, technology and rules. So please, Stefan, the floor is yours. You are mute. You should mute yourself. No, you are mute. No, no, no. Stefan, you are still mute. I, I don't know what is going on here. Sorry for that, audience, but you know, uh, sometimes some technical issue happen. My um, asking to our technical support to check why Stefan cannot speak we cannot hear him or maybe it is something with his uh, computer but well, we are going to solve it don't worry um, unfortunately this online option has, can be a benefit but also a bit tricky sometimes uh, you know. hello can you hear me can you hear me okay now, now we can hear you yeah. Okay. Uh, strangely, I was uh, it worked before, but now it is, uh, don't work anymore. Doesn't work anymore. So, can you see my screen? Hello. Yes, we can. Yes, yes. Okay. Okay. Then I put it on uh, full screen. Um, yeah, uh, I was invited to um, present today a little bit also the um, our experience as a another business uh, support organization uh, similar as ESBA. By the way, we are uh, reciprocally associated uh, because ESBA is focusing on the micro enterprises, which is also our interest because 99% of the enterprises are small businesses. We also, let's say, support uh, also the medium sized enterprises up to 250 uh, employees. Um, our confederation uh, ra has run um, a project uh, which has teached us some interesting lessons, which are also important to understand the uh, importance of the smooth project to uh, cope with the general data protection regulation of the European Union. Um, and that allows me now to maybe uh, present you shortly this uh, project and experience that we had, um, which uh, teaches us a little bit about the, um, the, the, the way how SMEs uh, are placed and feel in this brave new digital world. Uh, from 2018 to 2020 last year, just right before the start of the pandemic, we had uh, the honor to implement a pilot project that has been um, required by the European Parliament to the European Commission, because the Parliament has the right sometimes to ask for certain test projects in order to understand better one thing or another. Um, and the Commission has um, followed up with that uh, with uh, Horizon 2020 funds. Um, managed by DG Connect, and they launched a project uh, where SMEs should be uh, should receive dedicated services, coaching, and guidance in order to uh, find their way towards digitalization. We uh, European entrepreneurs won the call uh, and started the project that we called Digitalize SME. The link you can see um, can help you also to find more information uh, online. Um, maybe in short uh, words, the project uh, offered um, the matching between digital experts, digitalization experts, uh, which were called 
digital enablers. Of course, they should have uh, um, a good uh, track record of experience in consulting companies on introduction of new technologies. And uh, with companies uh, with, a, with a, let's say, adequate project or project idea for a digitalization uh, of, of part or entire, entirely of their activity. Um, and um, we, uh, with the project, supported this uh, with a honorary for the, uh, for the um, digital enabler, for the expert that went for one month to the company and uh, analyzed the processes, decided together with the company the strategy and then designed a detailed project uh, roadmap, let's say, in details also what should be done first, what should be uh, done uh, second, more or less the cost overview. And um, with this project at hand, the company could decide to invest or to apply for support or uh, either also to uh, don't do it. But uh, let's say uh, we, I can anticipate it immediately. At least one positive thing the pandemic has uh, produced. The companies then in 2020 uh, in a large majority started to invest in these uh, solutions because they had um, not only time but a, a desperate need uh, in um, changing their business models and go forward with uh, new uh, technologies and new sales channels, new uh, find new clients and open up to new markets. So um, the project itself uh, was also e evaluated, monitored continuously, and uh, we had now that gave us the possibility to, to better understand the challenges that SMEs were facing with digitalization. And that, first of all, told us that uh, it is absolutely not a matter of certain technologies. Or, I don't know, data-driven processes, 3D printing, AI, clouded supercomputing, photonics, and, and so on. But it is, first of all, a matter of business models. SMEs can change business models um, only when they really understand that um, they can earn more, can produce better, faster, and uh, deliver to their clients at a better price, um, preferably, or at least, let's say, at the same level of their uh, as their competitors. Um, but uh, just uh, Buying a new technology and introducing it uh, without having a clear idea of what kind of business model comes behind it um, is absolutely a great risk for a small company because it could um, decide about life or death of that company. A big company can maybe make test projects and uh, run uh, even with millions of uh, euro uh, a small um, trial and see how it works and then they uh, can close down these uh, company parts or open up new ones. An SME is such a company part and is even a, a much less uh, bigger um, company part and risks really much if they change their business model. Often these new technologies then require new skills. The employees and the entrepreneurs, uh, her or himself, have to um, learn new know-how and then also to set up new internal organization, find new clients and learn new rules to access these markets, and one of, one of which is GDPR. Let's see a little bit how we, um, how we met GDPR as SMEs in May 2018, when, the European, when it entered into force. It has to be said, GDPR has been uh, approved in 2016 already, and it uh, was decided to leave for two years of time to adapt uh, before the, it, the entering into force. But yes, unfortunately, in these um, these times when this time was not used um, well, let's say. So in June 2018, the European SMEs were mainly already under pressure from big competitors that already dominated large market shares with new technologies, particularly the big platforms, which were data driven, and uh, IT producers that obliged SMEs to adapt more and more to new technologies. They were not enough skill fit with the new technologies and digital technologies and um, the, they were looking desperately for new stuff or to adapt their own competences. The strategic growth and orientation gap also caused by the question what to choose now to remain fit also in five years when maybe the technologies have already changed again um, caused indecision, uncertainty 
and uh, high risk um, need to, to take risks. Yeah. So then in, that, in addition to that, they were also uh, in the need to, to search for new clients um, with new business ideas because their traditional clients uh, were step by step turning away from them because other new competitors on the market, especially those that were more digitalized were on the, on the, on the field. That was also the reason why already at that time and even before we were saying to our fellow companies always try to start immediately with digitalization because in five years time you will, you will be out of the market and that is only let's say because another competitor has done a little bit more than you and has a, be a little bit better price and a little bit better access to markets. Uh, and yeah, then in May we had on top of that also the entrance into force of GDPR. A set of rules that um, regarded exactly the, the most important good of this new economy, data, regulating its access to it and its use. Huh? And, the, uh, and the big players that were already on the market and had already um, strong power on the market had profited exactly before uh, from the situation of low or, let's say, competing regulations because um, they also used the competing regulations. I mean, one country had a less, had a lower data protection law, and another one had a higher one. So they went to uh, open their seat, uh, for example, in Europe, in one country and not in another. And that was um, uh, an unfair competition in the single market. So uh, also a unified European set of rules for um, data protection would have been absolutely necessary especially to protect these uh, personal information, as the video said before, of the European consumers. Um, GDPR and digitalization then from 2018 to 2020, um, GDPR threatened directly heavy sanctions on the uh, companies, which would not comply with it. And um, these sanctions could be enforced directly by the EU Commission. That was uh, also a little bit, let's say, new to uh, many of us because um, normally there was a kind of a national intermediation trying to understand better, let's say, the situation in one country and another. Um, and uh, unfortunately, um, that was uh, the, the idea behind that was another one, but um, it affected uh, also many of uh, our companies uh, and they were confused about this possibility of the commission to uh, enforce directly and the national uh, agencies also added up much more confusion. I can tell, for example, I'm German. In Germany, we have 16 um, uh, states, Länder, uh, which each one has its own constitution and it's all had its own um, data protection law. Uh, and uh, with that also a uh, uh, an agency for each region, Land, um, which could enforce this uh, data protection rules. Uh, and these agencies uh, were uh, giving contradictory interpretations of GDPR when it came out. Yeah, and that was abso uh, absolutely absurd because the companies were looking for certainty. Uh, there was also, um, let's say, the, the, the usual horror industry of lawyers which were offering services that if you don't buy their services, you will get uh, lost because of uh, stupid new European rules. That was more or less the, the narrative with which they sell their services. And um, so they were, uh, companies were also threatened, let's say, or frightened that there would be uh, heavy sanctions. But in truth, these heavy sanctions were thought for the big players mainly, uh, not for the 23 million of small and medium-sized enterprises in Europe. And GDPR had, of course, big advantages. It created a big market for 500 million consumers, um, which uh, could, uh, not, which was also se uh, one set of rules valid for all companies on the continent. So not anymore that uh, if you had a, comp a company that you wanted to sell services uh, in Estonia, Latvia, and Lit Lithuania, and in each one of them uh, they have another different law. Uh, but one valid for everybody and um, this allowed not only to uh, unify and um, uh, let's say prevent unfair uh, competition but also to set international standards which couldn't be easily uh, circumnavigated by GAFA, uh, Google, Amazon, Facebook, uh, Apple um, but also was taken over by others. Japan for example simply copied the European GDPR regulation into a national law 
without real critical um, or changes. And they said, yeah, that's easy because when 28 member states of the European Union have discussed so long and they have decided to set one set of rules, and this is 500 million consumers to which we want to sell, we um, are okay with it to simply adapt to that. And others uh, followed. Uh, the cent central problem of GDPR in truth was that the rules targeted particularly the, to limit the market power of the big players and the commission uh, to directly act against them uh, if necessary. But that created heavy uncertainties among the 24 million SMEs in Europe, which were still not ready to get the necessary step forward. So it needed explanation, explanation, and also in simplification um, to prevent digitalization from slowing down. This required uh, projects like Smooth. And I must said, say that all the project partners, Eurocut, ESBA, uh, and everybody, they have, you have made a great job because I think your tools are really valuable uh, for the need of SMEs. Um, I think also what uh, lessons uh, could we draw from that? We need, uh, before we do such kind of rule setting, also a, a thorough economic market analysis for uh, especially the special situation of millions of SMEs. Because uh, you must under, feel like it is when you, are, uh, when you have thousands of challenges around it and you are just a company of 5, 10, 15, 50 people. Um, and it is really heavy to uh, go beyond uh, behind everything. Then when you roll out new rules, um, that must be uh, accompanied and best before, during the two years of waiting that the, the rules will uh, come into force and, uh, um, and not after it, uh, by easy explanation. Why, why didn't the European Commission publish a, a series of uh, easy uh, how, to you, how to do um, tutorials in order to uh, sort out all doubts and problems um, uh, in all 24 European languages. Why not? I mean, and then of course also to allow simplified processes, online applications and uh, and apps for the smartphone that helps us to understand uh, best how to do in this and that case. Um, and this is what uh, Smooth offers. That's a great thing. Um, and of course, if we would have been involved uh, from the beginning, it would have been easier to uh, prevent this kind of problems, especially if the Commission would involve um, business support organizations like ESPA and European Entrepreneurs, because we are voluntarily associated organizations, so we don't have uh, obligatory membership like Chambers, and the companies trust us, and we can better mediate and obtain a better understanding from our members. So to cope with uh, complex processes like adapting rules uh, while the companies have um, feel to, that they lose their clients, search for a new strategy, have to invest into new technologies, reorganize and train their stuff, that requires really a dedicated individual coaching and guidance. That was a central lesson from Digitalize SME. The companies really appreciated 95% of approval, the fact that the digital enablers came to them and helped them and told them you can do this or that, and but this is more convenient and that is not. Uh, and these uh, enablers didn't come from Amazon or Apple or Google or whatever and did uh, try to sell them their products, but they were uh, independent and neutral to that uh, um, technologies. They really appreciated that and with that at hand now in 2020, when the pandemic came, when the situation became desperate, then uh, many decided to invest. Technology is, is never the focus in itself. The business is it. So how to earn more money or um, save money or to um, earn more clients and open up more markets. That, that means that also R&D must be SME and business focus driven, not research program driven. That means it should not be universities to write the R&D programs alone. At least there should be um, sub parts of the programs that should be driven, uh, written by. SME and business um, organizations, which can, let's say, interpret better the needs. And that regards also the agendas that must be set differently, included the setting of rules like GDPR, which should uh, take into account the certain situation, the, the precise situation, the economic market situation, and uh, the, um, the conditions that the SMEs are facing. So I think um, with this project, we are uh, getting a step forward, forward, maybe a little bit late, but that is uh, the time that we need, unfortunately. Um, and uh, we can, uh, of course, hope that GDPR will bring us a um, higher and more digitalized competitive European economy, which are 
99% SMEs. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Stefan, for this uh, really nice uh, overview about the, on the context of GDPR at European level. Um, I think, unfortunately, we had some uh, technical issue with uh, your presentation because uh, we couldn't see uh, all of the slides. But um, I mean, I think we can uh, also upload all the, the presentation in the website in order to the audience to see all of them after the event. So uh, now we can um, move on and uh, I would like to show you another small video just to uh, discover if your enterprise is a data controller or data processor through another wisdom pill developed by, by small. small. Okay, here we are. Um, I would like just to remind the audience that if you have any question or comments, please can post them in the chat and we will have a dedicated Q&A session late this morning. So we can move to the uh, next session and I'm glad to introduce to you the next panelist, Elija Piatovic which is a researcher and project manager at the Latvian Institute of International Affairs. Her professional experience is related to international relations and policy analysis, and she has been, has been responsible for exploiting the smooth platform in a free service model for the Data State Inspectorate of Latvia. Evita is also a micro entrepreneur with the project Lost in Latgale Kayakin in Latvia, or pronounce it well. Uh, Evita is going to share with us the impact of GDPR on micro enterprises, the case of Latvia. So, uh, Evita, please, the floor is yours. Okay. Uh, thank you. I hope you hear me well. And I hope that you see my screen. Perfect. All right, so today I'm going uh, to present um, two entities at the same time, as you already mentioned, Data State um, Inspectorate of Latvia, which is the main data protection authority in the country, and at the same time, community of small businesses in Latvia, as I'm a micro entrepreneur myself with my kayaking project called Lost in Latgale. And here is what I'm going to talk about in my presentation today. Firstly, I'll touch upon the reactions of uh, entrepreneurs in Latvia to introduction of GDPR. Then I will briefly tell you about the steps and measures taken by Data State and Pacture to help. Uh, then I'll share some insights from my colleagues' daily routine consulting, um, people including entrepreneurs. Afterwards, I'm going to show you some data from opinion pool on how was the experience of uh, entrepreneurs with uh, GDPR uh, and implementation. And afterwards, I'll provide my personal arguments for uh, why and how Smooth can help small businesses. And um, let me start with a bit of humor 
And um, I would say that uh, somewhere between 2018 and 2021, uh, entrepreneurs in Latvia, they underwent the full spectrum of emotions that can, can, can be compared to the reactions over someone's death. So somewhere in 2018, uh, in May, uh, we experienced stage one, which was um, chaos, anger and denial. Nobody really understood what is GDPR, what is it about and um, uh, how it really applies to, to my specific uh, um, enterprise. And even interpersonal relations were put under the pressure. People really didn't understand it anymore if they can uh, post pictures on Facebook with their family and friends. So it was really confusing. Then um, the stage two entered and people, um, entrepreneurs, they started to uh, seek for easy and quick solutions. And uh, the most convenient one for big enterprises was um, hiring data protection uh, specialists. And uh, all of a sudden it became increasingly popular uh, profession. And uh, even um, a number of issued licenses uh, increased according to data state and structured uh, statistics. Uh, while um, in the stage two medium sized entrepreneurs, they tried it to uh, rearrange duties among already uh, hired staff and uh, designate someone to be responsible for GDPR issues, so poor people. While uh, micro entrepreneurs, they at first they simply try to ignore the issue, and only some uh, try to solve uh, um, related aspects with GDPR uh, themselves. Then uh, by stage three, it became clear that GDPR um, actually requires a lot of uh, changes and um, uh, poses a lot of commitments for entrepreneurs and. Um, it was clear that a single person cannot deal with this all, including such things as data protection, uh, impact assessment, privacy policies, cookie policies, etc. Uh, but uh, people started to slowly understand what the GDPR is about and what are its requirements in respect to the um, enterprises. And then um, stage number four, and this is something about now, it was like 2020 and 2021, um, that finally reconciliation with GDPR took place and to some extent uh, people and also entrepreneurs, they understood that, well, could be that private information matters and uh, maybe it's uh, exactly the time to reassess um, our habits of data collection, personal data collection and data uh, processing. And uh, finally, people uh, started to think about if those client telephone numbers gathered back in 2017, they're still necessary. Okay. And from the very beginning, it was clear for uh, data state inspector that uh, entrepreneurs will not gonna make the way uh, to full compliance uh, on their own. So um, certain measures were taken to help. Uh, they were not exclusively uh, targeting small businesses, but anyhow, they were helpful for everyone. Uh, so for instance, in 2018, um, strategy of going public uh, was implemented and uh, communication activities were doubled, uh, including public discussions, events, interviews that were explaining uh, GDPR implementation procedures, process and its application. Uh, then also data state inspectorate uh, uploaded uh, numbers of um, uh, templates and, um, and informative materials to the homepage. Among them, for instance, this is an impact assessment template, incident registration form, also seminar materials on uh, GDPR implementation, etc. And um, Data State Inspectorate got involved in um, two uh, projects uh, that were um, that were targeting uh, small businesses and uh, trying to educate them and help them. So one is uh, Smooth that we are presenting today. Another one is about uh, um, educative activities taking place across the country and targeting uh, businesses. 
And finally, also the daily telephone consultation hotline was um, launched um, to consult about um, existing uh, issues on GDPR. And um, now here are some insights from, uh, from those uh, consultations. And please do not treat the, the data as objective statistics, but these are rather subjective personal observation of my uh, colleagues. So um, it could be that more than half of all consultations on GDPR are held by data state and factorate um, are held with uh, uh, small and medium size uh, uh, entrepreneurs. Um, and interestingly, that uh, entrepreneurs from less developed areas of country, they somehow tend to um, either exaggerate um, uh, GDPR application or fully ignore it. So they're more extreme in understanding uh, GDPR. And if we talk about issues and the topics that are uh, raised during those consultations, then uh, usually uh, these are related, for instance, uh, when enterprise, uh, when entrepreneur is developing a new product, then uh, they're asking if GDPR um, is applicable in this case to the new product. Uh, on the other hand, also um, people are asking about uh, inquiries, for instance, of clients in respect to their personal data. Then also uh, entrepreneurs are consulting about um, uh, administrative things such as um, elaboration of uh, documents, uh, cookie policies, privacy policies, etc. And of course also other issues. Um, um, and now I would like to share some um, interesting insights from opinion poll um, high, uh, by, the, by the data state uh, inspectorate in 2019, so Inspectorate hired a polling company uh, to question entrepreneurs in Latvia about their so far experience with GDPR implementation. So keep in mind, it's a, it's a July of uh, 2019. So by the time, um, most of entrepreneurs, uh, they were aware, they had heard of GDPR. Probably these are good news. Um, around 70% uh, considered that GDPR applies to their business and mostly service-related businesses aff affiliated their uh, activities with, uh, with GDPR. Uh, while um, about half of uh, all um, questioned entrepreneurs, they still said that, well, most likely they're not working with personal data uh, in their business area, which uh, makes at least me to think uh, that, that still it was not clear uh, what exactly personal data is and which areas of uh, daily activities uh, they include. And uh, when asked about main personal data challenges, then entrepreneurs um, they mention management mostly. They mention management of client and cooperation partner data management. Uh, other sections were more fragmented and only few of entrepreneurs mentioned them. Well, but about 60% said they technically they do not have any problem with uh, managing personal data. And um, of course, uh, uh, more, or more than 80% of entrepreneurs also mentioned that unfortunately they cannot afford and don't have data production specialists, uh, while uh, almost uh, one fourth uh, of all questioned entrepreneurs replied that they had uh, financial expenses related to GDPR compliance and the uh, arithmetic mean was around 500 euros. And um, to summarize uh, everything that I said before, here are my personal arguments, um, how smooth can help. Well, uh, reflecting the last thing I mentioned, I think that GDPR, the smooth offers, uh, firstly, affordable solution. And as you know, that business people, they really um, value money and especially small businesses um, they know the value of money and uh, they would uh, prefer to invest less than more. 
Then the second argument is, of course, that you can use Smooth as a consulting platform anytime and in any place. You do not have to arrange um, your time or uh, have some specific uh, devices arrangements except from your laptop and um, internet connection. And uh, thirdly, and this is very important, especially uh, maybe in reference to the thing that I was mentioning about uh, treating GDPR uh, very uh, radically one way or another way in rural areas, uh, then GDP uh, Smooth is uh, talking with entrepreneurs in their language. So they're, it's approaching entrepreneurs in an attractive, concise and um, understandable manner. And uh, finally, it's very important that Smooth provides individualized tailor-made guidance exclusively uh, arranged according to the needs of a particular enterprise. Thank you. That's all from me. Thank you very much, Elisa, for this uh, really inspiring speech. Uh, at least uh, you gave the audience a, a concrete um, example of a real case of Latvia with uh, some uh, really nice data to, I mean, we should, we could do, have a discussion on that afterwards. Um, so, and now I'm, I'm going to uh, show you another small video because uh, as Avija said in her presentation, maybe enterprises need to have some uh, more clear, clear feedbacks and information about GDPR. So uh, the question is, is my enterprise allowed to process personal data? Follow the video and discover the answer. Okay, so we are, we can move to the next and last session of this first part of the final event of SMOOTH. So I would like to invite uh, to the floor uh, Rosa, the project coordinator, that she's going to uh, talk about uh, GDPR and micro enterprises and MENS, the legacy of SMOOTH. So Rosa, please, the floor is yours. Uh, I think you're mute, Rosa. Ah, thank you. You can see my presentation, right? Yeah, okay, thank you. Well, let me see. Okay, the idea of the project came from the entry into force of the GDPR almost three years now. The new data protection law that affects all types of companies, regardless of their size. Complying with the GDPR is a challenge for SMEs because of their lack of data protection expertise and limited resources. Dealing with the constraints of the GDPR is difficult enough for SMEs, but even more for the smallest ones, the micro enterprises. The GDPR requirements for being in, in line with it 
makes them very exposed to the consequences of non-compliance. And as uh, we heard uh, before, on the other hand, SMEs are the backbone of the European economy. They employ two out of three employees and represent the 99% of the European non-financial sector. In particular, micro enterprises are responsible of the 30% of the employment and the 21% of the added value in Europe. The fact that the GDPR applies to all types of companies, regardless of their size, is particularly problematic for micro enterprises. What we did first at the beginning of the project was to identify the needs of the SMEs through a survey in which 100 uh, companies participated. They were asked about the degree of knowledge they had about GDPR and how they were, they were prepared to be compliant in aspects such as legal basis, uh, to process data, ICT measures they already had in place, uh, their online uh, presence, uh, cookies. And from the results and feedback received, what uh, we found was that, for example, regarding legal basis relied, 12% never relied on consent for processing and storing personal data, 18% make use of in form of consent forms uh, in relation with the processing of sensitive data, the 76% indicated that they did not really know whether they were processing a special categories of data that is applied for data about race, political opinion, health data, so on. For security measures, only the 35% answered positively to the question whether they were applying some basic security measures. And for what refers to the online presence, the 88% that uh, of the companies that took part in that questionnaire owned a website and the 53 and, and a mobile app. Uh, this uh, brings us to, to, to know that they, at, at least from the first pilot, not all the micro enterprises have the necessary informative documents in their websites. For example, terms of use were used by the 74% of the respondents and privacy policies only by the 65. Cookie policies, for example, the 53. There is a great lack of previous education about GDPR, and many of the companies have no digital background or legal knowledge. A large number of micro enterprises are self-employed, such as the hairdresser in the corner, the local florist, the mechanic, when they are asked if uh, they have a consent form in place to keep their clients' contact, for example, name, address, telephone number, they don't really know what a consent form is. Um, there are not simple and affordable solutions to help them to address the GDPR requirements. And now I'm going to explain how Smooth is bringing this solution. Smooth is an European collaborative project funded by the Horizon 2020 program in the digital security area. It was started in May 2018 and will finish by the end of this month. Smooth aims to assist organizations to comply with the key requirements of the GDPR by launching an easy to use and affordable plat platform. Smooth is based on state-of-the-art research and technologies to become a reference solution in Europe for GDPR validation for micro enterprises. Currently, it will be launched uh, supporting four languages, Spanish, English, Latvian, and Italian, and will be extensible in the future to other languages. In terms of uh, target, what we had clear was that Smooth platform had to be simple and easy to use by users with limited or no knowledge 
uh, at all about data protection legislation. It had to be inexpensive so that uh, companies could afford it. And it had to assess compliance against key aspects of the GDPR, providing guidance and recommendations to any sector of activity. For achieving our goals, SMOOTH has developed advanced technologies for automatically assess compliance with the key elements of the GDPR and is composed by different models, as for example, smooth text, that is for the analysis of the text document related to the protection of personal data, privacy and cookie policy, uh, smooth data, that is for uh, automatically analyze the, the personal data in the databases and the type of data, a small line that is for the analysis of personal data collection and exploitation from cookies by third parties in websites and mobile apps. Once uh, completed the registration process in the Smooth platform, the user is asked to fill in uh, a questionnaire with contextual information on its processing activities. This is information is to be used together with the automated test results to generate the compliance report, providing feedback on aspects of compliance and in case of non-compliance guidance and recommendations on how to remedy the identified programs. Another very important outcome of the project is the handbook for helping the, to fill the gap of education and awareness. SMOOTH has also developed an online interactive, interactive handbook to provide guidance, examples, videos, and links to external resources. The videos that we are sh sh seeing now and during this session are part of this uh, handbook. It is launched in uh, two versions, website and mobile app, and it covers Top topics as is my, if my company is allowed to process personal data, if my company is data controller or data processor, where to start compliance, if I should appoint a DPO in the handbook. We can also find templates of legitimate interest assessment, cookie policy, privacy policy, or record of processing activities. Later, uh, Nadia uh, will be showing uh, this, this will be doing a demo of this uh, handbook. And who is behind the Smooth? As legal partners, we have Q11 and the Latvian Data Protection Agency. We had also the Spanish uh, Data Protection Agency in the requirements phase, and the Italian uh, Data Protection Agency forms part of the advisory board. As SME representatives, company representatives, we count with the presence of ESBA, the European Small Business Association, and also funding box. For technical partners, we have UC3M, India, and Listec for the website model, website and mobile model, and Naver, Eurocat for the text model, and again, uh, Eurocat and NEC for the data analysis model. UNE is part of the consortium and is a standardization body that has led us to present a Zen work workshop agreement, the European Committee for Standardization. Uh, we have done a kind of foreplay of what later can be a standard with one of the results of the project. It will be the GDPR guideline for micro enterprises, useful not only for micro enterprises, but also for companies providing consultancy services. It takes the basis of the work done by Q11 during the project and will detail the principles to have into account with technical and organizational measures to be implemented. It will be published by April this year. Um, thank you very much. Uh, here, finish this presentation. I give back the floor to, to you. 
for the following speaker. Thank you very much, Rosa. That was a clear picture of uh, the Smooth project. And um, um, thank you. We are perfectly on time, so we can now take a break, have a 15 minute coffee break. So uh, take a rest, have a good coffee. See you here back uh, at uh, 10.45 with the last part of uh, the Smooth last uh, final event. Okay? See you in a while.
Okay, um, welcome back everybody. Here we are for the last part of the Smooth final event and we are now getting to the heart of the project, discovering the main outputs and um, results of the project. And we, we are going to do that uh, uh, with uh, our colleague An Angel Cueva Rumin, the technical coordinator for the development auditing tools to analyze the use of data in micro, micro SME's website. Angel is a tenure track assistant professor in the Department of Telematic Engineering at University Carlos III of Madrid, with a research focus on internet measurements, web transparency, privacy, and P2P networks. Angel will be the moderator of the next section, dealing with the smooth platform and handbook. So please, Angel, the floor is yours. So thank you very much for the introduction, Eva. Uh, so, uh... We have now a very interesting section, section that will be basically break into two different parts. In the first part, we are going to uh, see in, detail, in, in more detail uh, the main outcomes of, of, the, of the project that were introduced by Rosa already. Uh, that is the Smooth uh, Handbook, that is a GDPR specific guide for, for micro enterprises and SMEs in general. Uh, and later, uh, the, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll be presenting also a smooth platform, where basically the reverse uh, compliance report to micro enterprises that register in the platform and follow the process that uh, we'll introduce. In the second part of the session, uh, we'll uh, have an interesting uh, discussion about uh, why being compliant with the GDPR is important, how it, this might help uh, small businesses, and how we uh, see that through the experience we have acquired in the in this project. So uh, we go uh, directly to the first part, um, and let me introduce uh, the speakers. Uh, first, uh, we have uh, Nadia Fechi from from Q Leuven University. And, and Nadia will be uh, talking about the, the will be presenting the the smooth handbook. Uh, Nadia uh, works as legal researcher at the Center of uh, for ITP and IP Law of the Belgian University of Leuven, with a foc with a focus on media law and data protection. In a, in a smooth, uh, uh, Leuven are serving as a legal partner that. Uh, that has helped us to identify the legal requirement for the SNOOP platform, but also for the project in general, and has been uh, leading the GDPR handbook uh, effort in order to guide micro enterprises towards a GD GDPR compliance. The second speaker will be Rosa, Rosa Araujo, which is the coordinator of the project and has already participated several times and has been already introduced. So uh, I'll, I'll save some time. Uh, and not 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 uh, not present the the bio of Rosa again. So then, uh, Nadia, uh, whenever you want, you can you can present us the the smooth uh, the smooth handbook. Hello everyone, um, in the following 10 minutes, I will present to you the Smooth GDPR Handbook, uh, which is, uh, in addition to our automated uh, Smooth platform, an important part of the Smooth dissemination. I will first give you an overview of the five things or the five main things that I will discuss today. We will start with what is the Smooth GDPR Handbook, then uh, why did we draft the Smooth GDPR Handbook, how did the handbook come about, and uh, then I will give you a sneak peek into the handbook uh, to end with, uh, for those who are interested, where you can find uh, the GDPR handbook. Okay, so what is the smooth GDPR handbook? Uh, the handbook introduces the GDPR in an accessible and practical manner that is specifically tailored to small companies and actually to micro enterprises even. Uh, unfortunately for micro enterprises, the fact that you have a small business uh, does not free you from GDPR obligations. 
This is because the GDPR is based on uh, a risk level and not on your size. So a small business can still be risky from a data protection point of view. For example, if you have a lot of health data, uh, you will probably be a more risky uh, company. Nevertheless, uh, the handbook focuses only on those aspects of the GDPR which are most important for micro enterprises and which we think that they will need most help with. Uh, the handbook is implemented in both a website form and an application, uh, which are to serve as a guide regarding questions such as what is the GDPR, why is the GDPR important, how does it affect my business, uh, but most importantly, it sheds light on what needs to be done uh, to become GDPR compliant. Okay, the content. Uh, the content of the handbook consists of legal requirements most relevant for micro enterprises, as I just said. Um, this is obviously based on the GDPR, but it is also additionally based on e-privacy directive for, for some part. And this is supplemented by opinions and guidance, which are issued by the Article 29 Working Party, the European Data Protection Board, and also data protection authorities. So um, from, uh, from the experience of the initial two data protection authorities that participate to the project, we know that small organizations mainly carry out low risk data processing. So uh, that we used as, as a basis and uh, therefore the purpose of SMOOD, uh, for the purposes of SMOOD, we have ma mainly focused on uh, such low risk data processing. Um, the content of the handbook is not only delivered through text, but we also uh, designed infographics and videos. Uh, these videos you've already seen a few of. Uh, we included templates and checklists for GDPR compliance. So uh, here you should think of uh, a template to uh, assess your uh, legitimate interest. Uh, all the steps that you can take there. We have examples of uh, good cookie policies and privacy policies, but also we have uh, useful links to other resources which could be helpful, also external resources. We have a glossary. And finally, uh, we make use of plenty of examples. Uh, let's go to the next slide. So yeah, here you see uh, an example. We chose to uh, use quite a few of these because we uh, noticed that companies really like examples. It really helps them understand certain rules better. So we decided to give them all a uniform layout so that uh, you can easily spot examples in the content. Next. Uh, we uh, look at the characteristics or the main characteristics of the handbook. Um, the handbook was written specifically with micro enterprises uh, and other small companies in mind. Uh, it is written in English, but we are now also finalizing uh, the translation into Latvian. Uh, translation into other languages is possible. We are still looking into that. There are no real uh, concrete plans at the moment. What is important to know is that the handbook is free and it is publicly available. Uh, the language we use in the handbook, uh, we deliberately chose to write it in an accessible and an in intelligible manner so that people who have no legal background or a limited legal background or no data protection background, that they are able to understand it. So then finally, uh, the handbook has some interactive elements such as a quiz to test your GDPR knowledge. Smooth community feeds are added to the handbook from Twitter and the Funding Box platform. Uh, and we also make use of flowcharts uh, here and there. That brings us to why we decided to uh, write a GDPR handbook. Well, the handbook is rooted in the fact that micro enterprises usually have limited means and uh, in-house GDPR knowledge which makes uh, compliance extremely burdensome for small companies and even sometimes impossible. Uh, therefore, uh, we aim to create awareness with the target group uh, on the importance of being GDPR compliant. We aim to educate them and to help them solve uh, their data protection questions. So in general, we aim to make GDPR compliance less burdensome for microenterprises. Uh, maybe also note that the GDPR handbook uh, is to be seen independent from the smooth uh, automated assessment platform uh, because the GDPR handbook does not aim to assess GDPR compliance, it aims to help you, it aims to give you tools to uh, go, get towards GDPR compliance. Okay, so how did the smooth GDPR handbook come about? First of all, the handbook is a result of a multidisciplinary team effort where legal expertise, technical expertise, 
uh, were combined with a clear perspective of micro enterprises needs, uh, which were represented by uh, ESBA and funding box. Um, the process uh, of how the handbook came about is first, uh, the legal content was written. Uh, the legal content which was to be included in the handbook is based on the needs of small companies. And these needs were identified through uh, our representatives of small companies, again, ESBA and funding box. Uh, and by the data protection authorities of Latvia and Spain. Um, besides uh, the text, we also added templates, as I already mentioned. We added a quiz, we added a glossary, uh, and we tried to find the right balance between uh, being legally complete and, and having a complete picture and readability. Because if we would make the handbook too extensive, then nobody would read it. So we tried to find a nice balance there. Um, ESBA and Funding Box then reviewed uh, our legal text in the capacity of representatives of micro enterprises, and they structured the content for the website and layered it for the application. They also took care of uh, the design of the infographics and the videos. Um, and finally, the creation of the mobile app was done by uh, UC3M uh, in both an Android version and an iOS version, while the website was developed by Elastic. Okay. Then uh, now we're uh, at the time for a sneak peek. Um, okay, let's see if we can go to the website. Yeah, so this is uh, the landing page, uh, of course. On top of the page, we have several uh, tabs where you can find multiple things where we have categorized information. So under GDPR in a nutshell, you mainly get to see information regarding the scope of the GDPR. So to what does the GDPR apply? Where does the GDPR apply? And to whom does the GDPR apply? So I will quickly click so you can see uh, what it looks like. If we look at what is the scope of the GDPR, you see what uh, the page looks like here. We encounter one of the videos that we already saw. So. If we go back to the top, we have um, basics and essentials. And this tab is mainly uh, what we consider to be essential information for micro enterprises to know. So here you have information on what's a data controller, what's a data press processor, when do you take on these roles, what's the difference, and what's in between. So by that I mean joint controllers, separate data controllers, uh, that information can be found here. Uh, justification grounds is also a very important one. There we explain uh, about the legal basis for processing personal data. So think of consent, when can you rely on consent, when can you rely on contract, when can you rely on legitimate interest. So that's explained here. Uh, then uh, GDPR principles and rights that speaks for itself. Uh, here you can find uh, under person's rights, there's, for example, explanations about uh, people's rights to have access to their data, to have their data removed. So for this information, you go there, then compliance. Um, Compliance, that this tab is mainly with a lot of uh, practical relevance. You have where to start with compliance, where uh, we give you some steps about uh, what you can do first and what you should do next. Um, consequences of non-compliance, uh, DPIA information, when to assign a DPO, when you should still, should still check national law and what in case of data breaches. Then, uh, we go the processing situation this tab is actually uh, a tab that focuses on specific issues relating to the gdpr uh, about which there are many questions about which we notice that there are many questions so it's a kind of frequently asked questions if you like um, so here you find information on direct marketing for example camera surveillance health data and so on how to write a waterproof uh, privacy policy is also part of this so you see all the elements that should be there uh, and then finally the toolbox tab is actually where you find tools as <laughs> obviously um, and these tools are the templates these uh, you find the glossary here the quiz uh, and other useful stuff. Um, maybe I can show the quiz for a qu quick. Um, so here you can see it. Uh, if you click on start, the quiz will start. And then for example, you have what is the main aim of the GDPR? And then you let's say you give the wrong answer to restrict online advertising and you get, okay, it's wrong. And then you get the correct answer. 
Okay, um, on the right top corner of the website, you see an, an icon with uh, all kinds of different flags. Through this icon, uh, we have provided the possibility to translate the website into Google Translate, into a language you prefer. And we also link to uh, the website of the European Data Protection Board, because there you can find useful material, GDPR-related material in other languages. And then finally, uh, we have the useful functionality of a search bar where you can type in anything, let's just say, for example, direct marketing, then you are uh, immediately linked to, okay, where is it mentioned? This is, for example, the section where we talk about direct marketing. Okay, that was a quick introduction to the handbook. Go back to the presentation. Uh, then uh, we also like to give you an impression of the app, but unfortunately, uh, due to the time constraints, I cannot show you a demo of the app in an interactive way, uh, but I try to show it through uh, screenshots because the app contains the same textual content as the website, but it is structured and layered in a nicer way for user experience because you cannot show as, many, as much text uh, at the same time as you can in a website. So on uh, the slide you see on the left, a screenshot of uh, the main page of the app. Uh, if you click on the blue button left on the top of the screen, uh, you get the first menu, so the blue one here, uh, where you find the main content uh, by clicking on handbook. So then you get to the right to a screenshot number three. And then you also get the same kind of content that we just saw on the website. Um, if you click on the red button on the right, of the starting screen, you get the second menu, which, can, which contains more practical stuff like the glossary, the, uh, the, the quiz, uh, and so on. Then uh, videos. Uh, well, here I plan to show um, a video that we included in the in the um, in the handbook. I'm trying to see uh, if I can show it. Um, wait, so, well, actually, you've seen uh, most of the videos already, so I don't think it's really necessary to show the video uh, here so that I can keep also to my timing. Uh, we will quickly go to uh, the final part, so where can I find the smooth GDPR handbook? Um, yeah, so uh, the website can be accessed through the link you see here on the slide, uh, and the app can be downloaded in app stores, both in Android and in iOS version. Um, so yeah, that's uh, the presentation, the brief presentation of our smooth GDPR handbook. Uh, thank you all for listening, uh, and we hope that it can be of great use to many of you. Uh, so now I would like to pass the word to Rosa, who will talk about the smooth platform. Thank you, Nadia. Very nice presentation. Let's see. No, this is not the one I wanted to show. No. No. Yeah. I'm gonna run a live uh, test now with the Smooth platform. This is the landing page. Now we are in the market assessment phase and here are the main instructions for the users to know what to do. Uh, first, we require the users to entry to, to fill in the entry questionnaire of the platform and once they receive the compliance report, then if they can to fill in the, the survey for the market assessment. For what regards the, the smooth platform, here this uh, we explain the information we suggest to have at hand, data bases for personal data for customers, employees and suppliers, privacy policy, cookie policy, if the user wants us to analyze, the Android package file if they have an app mobile, and the, the URL of the website to analyze the presence of cookies. Uh, all these data are not necessary. It means that if the user does not have all these or does not want to upload uh, the files, it's not necessary. You can still run the platform. 
Then here, there is a four step guide. First, to sign the, the participation agreement, uh, and then complete the 10 block of questions. And then you will be receiving through email. And also, it, it is possible to go back to the platform to download the report in PDF format. For signing up, uh, here I have to provide uh, an email. That's there. Company name. Country, uh, Spain, for example. Here we choose the, the the country and the language in which the the, the company uh, operates. Okay, username. Then here, as I said in my previous uh, presentation, uh, the, the um, platform uh, is launched in four languages, Spanish, Latvian, uh, Italian, and English. Here, I can choose the, the, the language. If I go here, I have first to read the participation agreement. This is a quite long document for us to be also compliant with the GDPR. Here's our, here are the, all the terms of use of this platform. We explain where, what we do with the, with the data. Of course, we delete all the data, databases and files once we generate the, the report. It is once uh, we reach the end of the of this document when we can click the accept button and then I can start the test. Here we have 10 blocks of questions uh, for the contextual information regarding the processing activities of the company. The first one is for the general business information. Here we have, for example, where does my company operate within Europe, in which country. Okay, okay. Uh, here I can put the country. Yeah. Sorry about that. Here. Now, if my company is a micro enterprise, yes. In which sector do I operate? Here I have um, some options. Let's do, for example, healthcare. In what file formats uh, I store my data? Uh, let's put uh, paper, electronic copy, Excel, for example. Then when I push forward, I go to the second block here. It's for the processing of customer personal data. Here, um, we have these um, toolboxes in order to the user to know what are specific legal terms or maybe technical terms to help them. Here, if I have a different format than an SCV or Excel, I can here export my database to CSV with some tutorials. For customers, let's say, uh, yeah. And then I here I can upload an Excel, for example, here. Yes, I've uploaded a document. Which type of data do I collect? I will say contact information. Where did my company get the data from? directly from the individuals. 
why does my company process that personal data to conclude or perform a contract um, and also to comply with a legal obligation, for example. Then I push forward. Here is for the processing of personal data. Blocks two, three, and four relate to uh, the presence of personal data in our databases. This information goes to the database module to be analyzed. In order to not to do this test very long, I will put no because the questions are quite similar for these uh, three blocks, but just uh, changing the, the three party. Then here for uh, suppliers' personal data, uh, I would say no. Then pushing forward, I go to the Python model that is for the website and mobile app. Uh, if my company owns a website and mobile, I would say yes, both. Only a website, only a mobile app on neither of them. I would say yes, both. Then here I provide the URL. Example. If I use uh, cookies, I, I will put yes. If I make visitors aware of the use of cookies, I will say no. If I have a cookie policy in place, here yeah, we explain what a cookie policy is. I say no, for example. If I have an, an app here, I will have to upload the APK file to be analyzed. Uh, here, if my mobile app collects or process personal data, I would say yes, for example. Okay, now we are in the sixth block for transparency. If my company has a policy, a privacy policy in place, I will say yes. Here, this information goes to the text analysis model. Here, I can upload the document for my uh, privacy policy. Yeah. Here, we are in the block seventh. This is for the data minimization, accuracy, and storage. Uh, here, the question, if my company is collecting the personal, uh, the data that actually need, this is uh, uh, the principle of data minimization. Here, the explanation of what this means with examples. Uh, I'm not sure, then uh, I would say no. If I periodically review the data I hold and delete anonymize the data I no longer need, I would say no. If I have appropriate uh, processes in place to check and maintain the accuracy of the data I collect, um, I would say no. Uh, if my company knows what personal data holds and if I have an appropriate data retention policy in place, retention policy, if it's difficult to understand, we have here the toolbox to understand what is it. I will say no. Then forward. Here I have for the ICT security measures. Uh, if every person that works in my company uh, can access the most of the ICT environment, here the explanation of what is it, the ICT environment. Uh, I will say most of files are, and software are accessible by most of employees, for example. If my devices are password protected and if I have a passport, password policy in place, here the explanation. Uh, well, I will say that we don't, we do use uh, protection for all of the devices, but we do not have a password policy, for example. Do you have internal security policies and data policies that you communicate to your employees? Um, no. Are your devices uh, and storage devices encrypted? What does this mean? Here we have the explanation. 
some, no, I would say no, for example. Do you log access to your ICT environment and to personal data? No. Uh, is access to your office secured by an entry system and you keep track? No. Do you back up your systems in any way, including the cloud, to a certain extent? Do you store backup uh, backups at a different location uh, to a certain extent forward? Here, the block for our subject data, uh, data subject rights. If we ground individuals uh, the, the rights regarding the processing of their personal data, here are the rights, here are the explanation of uh, what does this right mean. In this case, I would say no, because I don't do it and I don't have the measures. If I keep evidence uh, documents of all the steps I take to comply with the GDPR, then I will say no because I don't know what steps they are. Then when I click finish, here now all the information, the contextual information together with the analysis of the um, different files and documents that has been have been uploaded start. This is a process that can last between 10 minutes to maybe an average of half an hour. Once uh, it's finished, uh, the system automatically generates a compliance report that is sent to the email that the user has previously filled in in the login page and can also go back here and download it because it will be appearing a download button for, for uh, the compliance report in PDF. Um, we have also, let me see, if can be shown. We have also an admin page in order to control all the activity in the platform where we can see if a given user uh, has uh, completed the, the report and have asked the data module or the text module or the cookie module to, to run. And if there is any bug, we can detect them. We cannot see the files uploaded, but we can, uh, with this uh, admin page, help them in case there is a, a bug in the in the process. And um, now I will try to find to to show uh, an example of of a compliance report. Uh, could someone tell me if? Uh, it is shown. Can it be seen my, my 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 screen with the report? Eva, maybe could you please confirm? If I see your screen, can you see the report, please? Yes, I do. The GDPR okay. user. Report. Yeah, yes. just to make sure because I, I'm changing many times the. Okay. Thank you, thank you. Well, th this is a sample of what uh, the result is. Here we have a, a general disclaimer uh, saying that this is for not very risk uh, processing. Coming from the first uh, block for a general business information, in that example, uh, the platform detects that it's likely that we are involved in high risk processing. And this means that um, we might require uh, extra safeguards to, to take. We have a uh, link. Sorry, may I interrupt you uh, just one second? Uh, this, we are seeing the GDPR user report that is not maybe the compliance report that you wanted to show. The report, Correct. no? The, the compliance report is what you see, right? No, we are seeing the GDPR user report, so that I don't see is the same that you want to 
uh, we are seeing the administrative pay, ad admin page from ah, okay. the platform. Then could you please give me back the control so that I can appoint to, to here? Yes, just give me a second. Just a second, as we're trying to give you back the panel. So, sorry for, for the technical issue. Okay, now, now we see. Now I see, no? Okay, this is, I saw them. This is an example of what a compliance report generated by the Smooth platform is. The journal disclaimer, reminding that uh, for higher risk processing, uh, maybe it is needed to take extra safeguards. Um, here we have reference to the GDPR handbook in case we want to know more about high, high risk processing. Uh, coming from the database uh, model for processing customer data, after the analysis of the database, the Excel that I've uploaded. Here, there is a reminder of what is the data minimization and what does it mean, and all the list of requirements to be in line with that uh, principle, the data minimization principle. Uh, what should a privacy policy contain? The following information, and here the list of minimum information that should contain our privacy policy. Uh, the reminder for each of the, uh, our different processing activities, what we need to identify the, pur the purpose. Here, the database model has identified the following categories of, uh, of data that maybe in the entry questionnaire we haven't identified. We just said that we were uh, just uh, gathering uh, contact information. And, and here, in that case, uh, in the Excel was information about rights, for example. And here, this is uh, the warning. Coming from the website and mobile app, uh, we have the reminder that uh, if we use cookies, we need to provide our visitors clear in information about and the use of cookies. The Smooth platform in this case has identified third party organizations in the website, and they should have the, the opportunity to refuse the cookies. Here we give good practices, to use a, a layered cookie policy to be in line with the GDPR. And here we have the analysis, the, the detail of the three parties that have been found in the website and were not in our privacy policy. And we should mention them. Regarding transparency, here is where the text model works and, and provides uh, feedback. And what this model is saying is that apparently uh, the privacy policy uploaded is not very easy to understand, requiring uh, an education level of college junior. And we should maybe revise simpler sentences. And here are the detail of the sentences that maybe we could improve to make it easier to understand. Coming from the data minimization block, here some recommendations to review regularly personal data we hold, to delete and anonymize that data if we no longer need it. From the ICT security block, this is what uh, the system found that we 
have a long trip to reach a good uh, security environment. And if we want to know more about what potential measures we could uh, take, here we have an external resource also to know more about what is there to be improved. Regarding data subject rights, as I said that I was not sure or I didn't know what they were and if I could provide them, here is the list. Um, the recommendation to take the necessary technical and organizational measures to guarantee that uh, requirements and rights. Regarding other GDPR requirements, uh, yeah, we should keep evidence of the technical and organizational measures, and we might be required to, to justify that we comply with that. There are not specific measures to prove the GDPR compliance, but here we have some examples of what specific measures could be. Uh, here we have, for example, so uh, a document for processing activities, what should contain. And yeah, this is a quite uh, complete uh, report uh, that is for a specific case that uh, we had run for, for, for a test. And this is all from, from my side regarding the, the test of the platform, the demo. If uh, you have questions, you can ask them later or through the, mm -hmm. the chat. Yes, so uh, uh, thank you very much, Rosa, and also Nadia. I'm sorry because as I, I got disconnected for a while. <laughs> the Wi-Fi of my home ran away. It didn't happen in the last three months, but it happened yesterday. So uh, as, as uh, Rosa and Nadia said, we are uh, receiving uh, the question you are making and, and we'll, uh, we'll uh, keep and we'll answer all of them in the Q&A session uh, at the in the Q&A session after after the next the next uh, slot. Okay, so please uh, keep uh, providing and keep uh, making us question and all the experts. I'll I'll send the question to the right uh, speaker. And, and uh, you will get all the all the all the answers. Okay. Uh, now let that, let me go to the next uh, to the next uh, part of this session, uh, where we'll discuss basically uh, why uh, being GDPR compliant is important and may help small businesses. Uh, to discuss this question today, we have uh, two persons. Uh, which are also uh, involved in the SMOOC project. We have uh, Thomas Wilsack uh, that uh, uh, that worked for Funding Box, one of the partners of the consortium. Uh, Thomas is a project manager, is project manager, business developer, and has been a former startup co-founder with extensive international experience in dynamic business environments, uh, having working with a, a, SAAS, uh, software, so basically software as a service, and digital content startups, marketing agencies, and media. In a smooth, uh, Thomas represents Funding Box as a project manager. Funding Box is a European non profit organization, a, both one of the largest European deep tech ecosystem a, with a funding platform for entrepreneurs and a screening and matching service for investors and corporates. Also, we have Alex Pereda Baño from Eurecat, uh, where he is a senior researcher leading the perception and cognition research line within the data science unit. He has been involved in several European research projects, carrying out the user evaluation tasks, while also disseminating the use of these methodologies to a variety of stakeholders in the ICT fields. Uh, in the case of Smooth, he's acting as a senior analyst in charge of the perception and, and cognition research. In addition to this introduction, both Alex and Thomas 
has been very involved in the design and evaluation of the smooth pilots and that, that's why they are the right persons to to uh to be here uh in this in this session so let me start uh, with a first question i will send it to thomas but obviously alex feel free to to jump in uh if you consider it necessary so the first question is basically why is the gdpr relevant for companies and and even more do you think uh, thomas that they should perceive the gdpr simply as an obligation so it's a law i need to uh meet and that's it or actually uh this is also an opportunity and it's something that can be good for them thank you angel i'm trying to share my screen with you because of course we have prepared some uh, slides to actually uh, help illustrate some of our uh, of our comments um, I'm struggling to uh, be very honest to share uh, could you please give me uh, the possibility to share again and uh, we can then carry on uh, yeah okay. I'm not sure if you can see my presentation now. Yes, we can. Yes, 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 yes we can. can see it. Okay, fantastic. And this is working. Okay, thanks a lot. Uh, yes, please, uh, Anka, could you repeat the question? And uh, yeah, then of course I will. Um, I will try to respond. Thank yes, you. Sure. So basically, I would, what I was uh, basically a. Uh, asking you is whether the why the GDPR is relevant for companies and not only that is but whether they should perceive this just like a, a legal obligation they need to meet or actually it's something else it's an opportunity and it's something that is good for them in in yeah. some manner yeah yeah of course well uh, first of all thanks to all the speakers uh, uh, especially at the beginning those re representatives of uh, small enterprises and micro enterprises which have already spoken a lot about all these uh, these aspects which was very insightful thank you for that um i would say being compliant um of course uh, is um uh, it's not only a legal obligation, uh, but it's uh, it's good for business, and this is indeed a message that we have tried to uh, get across uh, throughout the entire projects in our communications when announcing uh, pilots, uh, etc., to make uh, um, uh, micro enterprises aware of of the fact that um, well, there are a number of uh, benefits. Uh, a part of just being uh, uh, compliant or, 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 or matching the legal obligation. Um, let me just point out three uh, um, for now, which would be in the first case, uh, it reinforces uh, the Microprices brand's reputation. Um, um, as I say here, by showing to your customers a reliable data governance system and that you care. I mean, we have to be aware that we are in a new paradigm, um, especially now with COVID, but even before already, uh, where citizens are empowered, citizens, users, customers, uh, however you want to call them, um, they are aware of uh, their data, of their rights. Um, they are aware of big uh, tech giants using the data, uh, for their advantage, the best business models around it. So uh, actively showing that uh, you are uh, GDPR compliant and that you care about the data of your customers uh, is indeed uh, added value, added value to any of your services or of your products. And if you do it well, well and proactively, uh, it will uh, it will help. So there's definitely a shift in perception. Uh, in general, in the in the in the digital sphere, I would say. 
uh, then not having uh, risks to get uh, fined. Well, I guess we all have seen um, news about hefty, hefty fines for data breaches, for GDPR. This can happen to any business, big and small. The big difference here is uh, a big company, I think as Stefan said this morning, a big company, a big corporation, uh, they can uh, support uh, having to uh, uh, support a fine of this of, of of this magnitude, but probably for a small business that is just starting out or just trying to find its feet, uh, this could be uh, the end. So I guess many of the small businesses are not really aware of uh, the risk. So we have been also very vocal about this to educate them. And um, I would say our tool is uh, a first step, uh, an orientation uh, for small businesses to, uh, uh, to prevent fines. And then, of course, uh, if they're not compliant, they will have to do uh, more things to do so. But um, yeah, I guess uh, the authorities uh, won't accept uh, uh, the case of uh, ignorance or not knowing. So. This is a very important thing. Uh, there are risks involved, of course. Um, and lastly, uh, give your business uh, the chance to cut costs. Well, um, especially a compliance report like ours and our tool and our handbook is like a first touch point, I would say, uh, to help a small business to get uh, its house in order, uh, in a way, to to help small business owners to be aware of what the structure is, the data structure they're working with and how they can improve that, how can they streamline it, uh, what can they get rid of, uh, what do they need. And in the long run, uh, probably this will be, uh, this will save them money uh, in terms of well, server capacity or, or time, simply time investment. So, yeah, I think these three are are, are quite important. Um, let me just carry on because these three themes, as I said, we have used them a lot um, during the communication of the pilots, and there is still a pilot ongoing. Uh, and I would like to use the uh, the occasion, the opportunity here. Um, Rosa has, uh, of course, already mentioned shortly. Um, uh, the pilot, the market pilot that is uh, running at the moment, but uh, her focus was more on explaining actually the platform and how it works, the different uh, questionnaires. So let me just very quickly uh, give you a quick update uh, so you can, you can actually, uh, well, we invite you to still participate. It runs until the end of the month and we are keen to get as much uh, feedback as we can on the tool which uh, so uh, we can also get it ready uh, for the time after after the project ends. Uh, let me just very quickly run you through uh, the, the process again, just so you have it uh, in mind. Um, and I hope I can bring you in to participate, any microenterprises that are listening. So um, there's the platform access, uh, which you can get get to through our website uh, and there as uh, Rosa said um, uh, there are some short instructions and then uh, you can sign up uh, for the um, market pilot uh, then you have to fill in the entry questionnaire uh, which um, Rosa has showcased very uh, in detail uh, just a moment ago um, there you can uh, we, we invite you to upload documents, data sets, uh, so our algorithms can do their work and we can get better feedback. Uh, let me point out that this is uh, safe. Uh, we will come back to that a little bit uh, later now about the feedback that we already have. Safety is of course an important point, trust, and uh, you can upload your data. It will be deleted right after the algorithms have done their work, so this is uh, safe. And then at the end of the entry questionnaire, you get a, a, a market survey to help us uh, find out uh, where this uh, product would stand uh, uh, in the market. 
So that is uh, a quick overview of uh, what the market pilot is. And um, we also have some rewards, uh, a part of the incentives or the benefits that I've just explained. Um, you get a free GDPR compliance report, which uh, is of course important. Um, a 12 month free subscription, uh, in case uh, once the platform is actually uh, um, published. This again for small businesses, especially startups, I believe is something very interesting. Uh, startups do uh, iterate quite a lot. Uh, they change their business models. Uh, they have to adapt to the feedback from the market. So having the possibility to, during 12 months, to do several reports, uh, to do several checks could be extremely interesting, uh, we think. And of course, another reward is our uh, eternal gratitude uh, for helping us. Um, let me just very quickly show you the website. Um, uh, as Rosa said, I hope I can jump now on the website. See if Wi-Fi works very quickly. It's taking some time. I guess I can go back since uh, Rosa has already uh, explained before how to access. You just go to our smooth website. You see the uh, link here, and it has already been posted quite a lot on uh, our chat as well. And uh, there you go to Smooth Market Pilot, Pilot, join the pilot. You will see the instructions. You fill in uh, the sign up uh, form, and uh, then you are part of the pilot, and you can do everything I've just explained. Uh, just very quickly, there is an online community with uh, uh, close to 500 members uh, already. Uh, any help desk, any questions that you might have during the pilot, but also about Smooth in general, uh, you can post them there if you don't post them now for the Q&A session in a bit. Uh, and this is the online community, which is uh, on the Funding Box platform. Uh, it's uh, also very easy to sign up for it. And there are different channels, let's say, where you can introduce yourself, talk to your peers, ask for legal concerns, uh, report any pilot box, and get support. Um, and I guess that it it's for, 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 I hope I have responded questions, and I think I've went a little bit further. Uh, Angel, I'm heading, handing back to you. So. Okay. So. Thank you very much, Thomas, for your explanation and also for introducing the audience, the, yeah. the current ongoing pilot for, for Smooth. And I also encourage those of you in the audience that, that, that are willing to participate uh, to do it. I think it's worth it and uh, this is a win-win. It's good for you and also good for the project because we could keep learning and keep improving uh, our our platform. Uh, but uh, based on what you presented, I would like to, to drop another question to Alex, uh, because the good point of this project is, uh, 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 is that we have won uh, quite a lot of experience uh running this pilot interacting with micro enterprises in the context of the gdpr and alex that has been in in, in contact with them and has been leading the evaluation of, of of the platform by from these these companies i would like you to tell us a bit about uh what type of companies has participated in the pilot and whether these companies have found smooth as a useful tool and, and, and what are benefits they have obtained out of out of using out of using or out of participating in smooth pilots? Well, thank you, Angel. Like, if you want to the next slide, so uh, we have quite a variety of uh, nationalities uh, participating. Of course, we are quite biased to the countries that. Uh, uh, the partners of the project were from because in the end we use our contact networks in order to, to recruit participants so that's understandable but even though that i think we have a nice uh, variety of, of countries and if you go to the next slide we see that the uh, that um, let me see 
that uh, a variety of businesses applied in principle to the to the validation process uh, but uh, it's it's obvious that whatever the priority of GDPR for for this month was at the beginning of, of our project during the last year, this has lowered down a lot in priority. So it has been very, very, very difficult to to get uh, men to to participate in the pilot. Even though uh, we achieved the the minimum uh, number that uh, that we wanted to achieve, uh, in the end, most of the of if you want to the next slide. Well, this one is interesting as well in terms that most of our men are, are really are really men's like with less than than ten employees. We had many many cases indeed of one company, uh, uh, one sorry, or one person companies. Like, so so that's uh, something to note too because uh, we have a tool that's tailor made to a lot of different situations. But even within that. Uh, reduced universe of uh, of situations that we have we still have a lot of variety of, of of typologies of companies within the within the category meant so this is something that that's important to take into account but if you go to the next slide it can be seen that in the end the companies that ended up participating in the in the pilot mainly came from the digital domain like uh, probably the categories that domain is software and tech legal services healthcare advertising and within the other category you have lots of businesses that all of them in the end had some some degree of digitalization to them like online libraries or counseling services for data for data managing that kind of that kind of stuff so it can be seen that Digital companies are at least uh, in these priorities we were mentioning before. They still uh, have a, 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 a are more worried about the issue of the GDPR, and you can see it. Like as Thomas, as Thomas mentioned, and and uh, Stephen Morris mentioned before too. Uh, most of them came under the, the the impression that that they needed to tackle this because otherwise they would be fined and well there's a lot of there's a lot of uncertainty uh about all of these issues and i think that one of the main things that uh, that smooth brings to these enterprises and we will see it later in in the in the very comments of the participants it's knowledge it's uh, mitigating a bit this uncertainty and knowing what the GDPR is about. So we can see that in the end, a total of 47 SMEs participated in the second pilot, adding up to 68 users. But it was in the second pilot where the where the whole platform was ready and they were actually checking their their compliance report. Uh, we see that most uh, users have uh, graduate or postgraduate education and their self self perceived degree of Digital and privacy literacy, it's it's high for for digital literacy as you might expect for the kind of user we have, and it's it's uh, lower for their self-perceived privacy literacy. That's in the end one of the reasons they are here. So, like, if you want to, to go ahead. So, as I was saying, the biggest opportunity is the fact that that. that you raise awareness of the various aspects of the GDPR. And this didactic aspect has been very much emphasized in the project and demanded by the participants. So in, in a way, this is an expectation that, that we have met, that you know this has to be, in many cases for them, like a, uh, a learning experience. Uh, participants generally understand the questions and recommendations and compliance reports, but there's a lot of struggles with legal parlance uh, uh, and of course, I'm not a, I, I could share that with them because I am not an expert on on data management myself. And um, sometimes, you know, for at least half of these participants were tested on an online session with me, where we were discussing their interaction with the platform online. And sometimes it's it's you have to be with them that even when there is an explanation of the term legal parlance, of course, uh, it's not something that the that you know the, the layman is always able to, to process. They also acknowledge the relevance of, of the different evaluated aspects of the business and 
when availing of the necessary information, as, as you have seen Rosa demonstrating it, if you, if you read the instructions and know what materials you need to bring into the test, the whole process is usually completed in much less than half an hour, which was a, a, an initial requirement that, uh, that the project had. Um, if you want to go ahead. So these are just excerpts from for uh, some of the some of the participants we have. Uh, people usually have reasonable expectations about uh, what what smooth can provide them, and as you will see, they appreciate the the fact that after interacting with the platform, they really are much more knowledgeable about what GDPR is about and how it affects them. Sometimes, I mean, we had we had a case of, of a person that uh, that in the end didn't participate because what we wanted he wanted from us was to put a smooth base in his website, uh, a batch in his website, like acting as a certification process. Like we need to make to keep people very clear that this is not a certification process. And uh, uh, but but it's uh, connecting what Thomas was saying. It's good to see that this person at least understood that being GDPR compliant is an opportunity in terms of you know uh, making his business more appealing to to you. So 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 I think that's an uh, interesting point. Uh, you see, in the end, uh, well, I put that in Spanish, but he's saying that he didn't have any problem. Um, as as I said, an interesting way to learn about GDPR. If you want to go ahead, yes. Yeah, uh, here you have. Uh, go ahead, Thomas. Yeah, there are a couple of more uh, um, uh, feedback uh, well, uh, quotes from uh, from people that we have actually interviewed, also for the communication part. And uh, yeah, it was just to showcase that, of course, um, overall. The, the 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 feedback was very positive but also constructive there were also uh, always things to be pointed out and uh, we have indeed uh, had uh, some fantastic learnings uh, we will come to uh, some of them in a in a second but yeah uh, indeed there have been fantastic learnings which have which have been implemented um some of them already and have helped us uh, fine-tune a lot of uh, things about uh, about smooth um but this of course is ongoing and uh, yeah as i said before the market pilot is also there so there is still an in-depth evaluation of, of all that data underway and uh, yeah so this is uh, of course a work in progress So yeah, like uh, like as as you are saying, uh, uh, usually in, in during the validation process we collected both quantitative and qualitative feedback. And usually, what you get from the quantitative feedback is it's more like uh, an alarm signal that something is going very wrong. So in that respect, well, that feedback was always very good. It, it is in the qualitative feedback where people uh, tell you about the the things they 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 like to see improve. Uh, like, for example, this is a very good critique that helped us a lot. Uh, and we had a few of these because you have to take into account that when we came into the second pilot, even though we had already tested the, the usability of the end questionnaire, this was the first uh, coming into public of the compliance report. So at first, uh, we got some very nice feedback on it that helped us uh, improve it later on. Like, for example, the one that, that you see here, uh, this was obtained in an interview actually with one of the participants, but usually this is the kind of thing that they were telling us uh, also during the during the pilots, like uh, a bit more tailored. With uh, usually they ask for more uh, for more um, a more visual approach to the information. That that's a recommendation that we have taken on. Uh, also providing clear uh, links to to get more information on the issue that's being discussed, which in the end I think is one of our of our main aims. So if you want to go ahead. Yeah, I think we uh, uh, we need to go back to uh, Uncle for a second, or we can also uh, just carry on. Yeah, sure. So I, we yeah. are running a bit out of time, so I think it's better if we 
Should yeah, let's just very quickly, of course, um, yeah. From the, yeah. From the audience. Yeah, go ahead, Thomas. Yeah, yeah, just very quickly, of course, we, we want to uh, showcase the learnings. Pilots are for learning always. Uh, good feedback is great, but also uh, any obstacles uh, help a lot in improving uh, products. So we just wanted to showcase a little bit what uh, uh, what the main points are uh, in terms of obstacles that we have uh, um, received or, or, or experienced. Um, I would say um, that COVID-19 was, the impact was indeed felt uh, strongly. It has um, amplified and um, intensified, intensified certain aspects of how small companies and small businesses deal with GDPR or react to our service offering. Uh, just quickly, I would like to point out too, uh, on the one hand, we really uh, believe also from the feedback that we get uh, that uh, they have uh, other things to care about at the moment, which is actually survival. Uh, in a way, uh, of course, uh, we, it's an exceptional situation. And um, that, of course, the shift of life in general, uh, not only the business life, but life in general onto the digital sphere has caused certain digital fatigue and over information. So getting through with the message and bringing people in hasn't been always uh, easy, but uh, it's uh, indeed a, a, a fantastic learning point. Um, then uh, GDPR. The theme itself and uh, its complexity. Also, we have done everything to, from branding, as you have seen, changed in branding to make it more appealing to uh, interesting media comms, fantastic work there from ESPA, uh, uh, webinars, um, user experience, etc. So, we have done everything to make this appealing and interesting, but uh, let's be honest, GDPR uh, is uh, sometimes. Uh, not very appealing as a as a theme, so uh, that uh, we we have gotten that as feedback as well, and trust in the sense what I said before, uh, uploading data to a platform when you are used to talk to a person and have maybe a lawyer at your side or uh, is sometimes difficult to gain that trust. Uh, we've also worked on that have been very vocal, but I would point out that these three were like things that have uh, that have been obstacles in order to onboard uh, micro enterprises to 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 take part in these pilots. Um, yeah, and uh, that's from my part. I don't know, Alex, if you have anything to add here. Uh, I think that's all from my side too. Unless there are any more questions. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So thank Thanks. you very much. Thanks a lot. Uh, uh, thank you very much uh, for your interesting. Uh, contribution and uh, we got few answer, few questions from the audience. Uh, I think technical coordinator of Smooth uh, Technical Maya, I will be able to answer myself. And meanwhile, I invite other people in the audience to to, put, to make their questions, and we'll we'll, we'll keep uh, uh, answering them. So the first questions, the first question uh, proposed by Hans Hermann Heland uh, says that. David Caro said in his statement that the Smooth Planet pilot will go offline 29th 29, 29 January 2021. Does this mean that the whole activity will go down? Uh, the answer is no. So basically, uh, the goal of, of the Smooth platform is to uh, to, to uh, become a commercial platform after the project. So obviously, while you participate in the in the in the in the pilot, and if you decide to join the pilot, that's has some benefits that uh, Thomas uh, that Thomas just just uh, saw in the in the slides. Uh, but later, any company might uh, might be uh, deciding to use Smooth will be able to do that. But it it will become a, a commercial product. So basically, for running uh, your to, for obtaining your compliance report uh, from the Smooth platform, uh, you will need to uh, pay a fee. We still didn't this part. Of, of still of, of being defining what would be the, 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 the cost. It will be something, uh, uh, let's say, reasonable because our target audience are mostly micro enterprises and SMEs. Uh, so uh, the platform will be there and will be uh, a commercial product. In particular, it is a company 
an SME and small and medium enterprise that is a part of the project that will be in charge of running uh, the platform uh, beyond the, 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 the project lifetime. The second question is that uh, what made by Antonio Castro and uh, refers to whether there will be uh, some other material added to the handbook. So maybe uh, Nadia, can you, can you, as leader of, of the handbook uh, fourth, can you answer that question? Can you repeat that, please, Angel? Yeah. Because I didn't. Yeah. I didn't get Antonio to... Castro is asking whether we plan to add some extra material to the handbook. All right. Okay, well, actually, I think we can consider most of the content final because otherwise we will have to keep updating. But uh, in case we would see something that's really, really important, I think we can still add it, but it's not scheduled for now. But let's say there's a decision which changes something that's really important, we, we should do it because for now the project is still ongoing. But it's not something that we will strategically plan to do now. I hope that yeah. helps. Yeah, thank you, Naya. So basically, I agree with Naya. So we, with a team of experts, have added whatever we thought it was relevant. Obviously, we might have missed something. So if we welcome any feedback from any any expert and any, especially from users from micro enterprises, and if we find something important has been missed, we'll, we'll update uh, the content of the handbook. Another if I may add, Angel, sorry, a, a quick uh, addition, uh, because we are now still doing the survey. So let's say if something comes out of the survey in which we see that a lot of people are seeing the same comments, then we implement that, of course, because but if, yeah, it will depend a bit on the outcome of that, but there is still a possibility that something will be added or changed or based on that. Okay, so thank you, Nadia. So there's another question that's coming from uh, Maya Radisic. Uh, let's say, hi, can an organization order than micro, small, medium-sized enterprises such as non-for-profit non, uh, organization research cities join the small farm market pilot? Uh, 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 Maya, the answer is yes. Obviously, uh, a smooth uh, applies is focused on on a small and medium-sized enterprises, but we do not close our platform to anybody. So anyone interested on on, on using the platform can do it, and this obviously includes a non-profit organization like NGOs. Uh, it includes a research institutes. It includes any entity that is subject uh, to the to the GDPR. So please uh, don't be shy and, and as, Mar as, as Thomas say, participating in the pilot has some advantage, some advantages that will not be there in few months. Uh, one when the plat when the when the smooth project becomes a, a commercial platform, you will, as I say, you will still be able to use it, but then will be a commercial product and you will need to pay a small fee to uh, be able to receive your, your, your uh, compliance report. But we encourage anyone interested to join this, the market pilot because as I say, it's a win-win. We win, we as a project win because we get your feedback and we get more information to improve the platform towards the final commercial delivery. And you on your side get uh, the advantages uh, Thomas so obviously the compliance report, one one year free subscription, et cetera, et cetera. So please go ahead and and, and, and join the market pilot. The, I mean, to my knowledge, there is no other question from the audience. I don't know if someone else is still missing something or wants some clarification about any of the content that has been uh, presented during this this conference. Otherwise, uh, if there's no uh, more question, I'll I'll give the floor to to uh, Rosa uh, to wrap up the conference, and, and I close the, the session. So thank you very much, everybody that was attending. Thank and you, session, I'll give The floor to 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 Rosa. Thank you, uh, Angel. Now, this is to finalize 
Uh, we know that there are some statistics circulating on the number of fines that for non-compliance with the GDPR that large and well-known companies are receiving. I think the largest fine so far has been to Google by the French authority, uh, but the numbers are going up. Data protection authorities are showing that are ready to tackle GDPR violations with high penalties. For example, the Spanish uh, DPA recently this month has fined CaixaBank with six millions for insufficient legal basis for data processing and also another one to Vodafone. What we wanted with the smooth was to help uh, micro enterprises, making them aware of their responsibilities and obligations with the existing regulation and assess their level of compliance, not only to avoid the economic consequences in case of breach, but also to increase their client confidence uh, and in parallel to safeguard the privacy and security of the European citizens. It is true that to simplify legal terms such as, for example, legitimate interest assessment, legal basis for processing right to data portability or technical terms uh, such as accuracy of the data, security measures, data breaches, is not simple and requires the user to have the time and effort to be willing to learn and control the whole process of data management within their normal activity workflows. This means monitoring the data they might manage from the moment they collect it until how they record it and maintain the data. Although it has been a difficult challenge, we hope that we have contributed with these three main results of the project, the platform, the handbook, and also the GDPR guidelines for micro enterprises coming out of the Zen workshop agreement to make the companies more aware of the type of data they handle and to know what they have to do with this data to be in line with the GDPR. And thank you very much on behalf of all the consortium if you want to know more about the Smooth, please go to the Smooth website or Smooth social media and get in contact with us. I hope you have enjoyed this session, this quite complete session. And thank you, thank you very much and take care. Bye.